my series of informational videos about Cisco 3.0. This episode is going to be about numbers, really big numbers. Now, if you're paying attention to the crypto and blockchain technology space, you might already have some background on some of these numbers I'm about to share. But if you are relatively new to crypto and blockchain in general, well, these numbers will seem pretty incredible. Let's get into a few of the movers and shakers in the blockchain world. I'll give you an idea of who they are, what they are, what they're used for, what their currency is, and what their growth has been. Spoiler alert, there is a pattern behind the order of the presented technologies here, and I'll point that out near the end. Okay, first up is the big one, Bitcoin. The coin is BTC, and it is a pure store of value blockchain. There's nothing else that it does. Bitcoin was the brainchild of Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, the name Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym. Nobody knows Satoshi's real identity, and no one even knows if Satoshi Nakamoto is one person or a group of people. Okay, here's Bitcoin's numbers. BTC launched in January of 2009, and in my opinion, barely had any value until 2013, when it really broke out in price and acceptance. In 2013, it had a market cap of $1.5 million. Today, the market cap is over $800 billion. And before the market crash at the end of 2021, it had a market cap of nearly $1.2 trillion. Good work, Satoshi, whoever you are. Next up, Ethereum. Ethereum's coin is ETH. It's a utility coin where ETH is used to pay the cost of transactions. Ethereum was the brainchild of Vitalik Buterin. Vitalik was a fan of Bitcoin and became an expert on it and saw that he could take the code base of Bitcoin and make it more than what it currently was. Vitalik is still with Ethereum today and he is a founding member of the DAO. The DAO is a decentralized organization that administers Ethereum. The numbers. Ethereum launched in August of 2015 and had a market cap of about $100 billion. But today, the market cap is over $350 billion. Like BTC, it also hit a high during the bull market of 2021. ETH's market cap then hit $560 billion. So, nice job, Vitalik. Oh, and it's important to recognize that Ethereum was, and still is, a revolutionary blockchain in that programmers could now add custom code into the chain thereby ushering in the invention of smart contracts. This evolutionary step forward broke open the doors for all imaginable uses of blockchains. So, absolutely, major kudos to Vitalik. Next, the Binance Smart Chain. Binance was founded by a Canadian who goes by the initials CZ. There are two Binance chains, the original and a split from the original. The split occurred when CZ realized the potential of Ethereum's smart contracts. He decided to fork the code base of Ethereum, make improvements to its speed and scalability, and rebrand it as Binance Smart Chain. Binance's coin is BNB, and like ETH, it's a utility coin used to pay transaction fees. And the numbers for Binance? As of September 2017, it had a value of $16 million, and today, nearly five years later, it has a market cap of $67 billion. During the bull crypto market of 2021, it hit a high of over $100 billion. A nice return on investment. Next up, Polkadot. An alumni from Ethereum, Gavin Wood, broke out on his own in early 2020 to create the Polkadot smart chain. The unique twist on this chain was to provide connectivity to private, permissioned, and permissionless chains, as well as address the problems of speed and scalability. In August 2020, Polkadot had a market cap of $57 million. And nearly two years later, it now has a market cap of about $22 billion. During the bull run of 2021, it topped $50 billion. It obviously pays to be connected to Ethereum. Oh, and the coin of Polkadot? Dot. 
another utility token used to pay transaction fees. Next on the list is Avalanche Chain. A Cornell University professor released Avalanche in September 2020. The unique use case of Avalanche is that it supports multiple different blockchain VMs as well as multiple different tokens. Their vision of the future is to digitize all assets, a token for everything. In 2020, Avalanche had a market cap of $124 million and nearly two years later has a market cap of $23 billion. During 2021, it hit a high market cap of $28 billion. The native token is AVAX, and it too is a utility token. Next, we have Cardano. Two other alumni from the founding of Ethereum brought Cardano into existence to be a for-profit blockchain targeting private enterprise and governments. The native currency or token for Cardano is ADA. The ADA coin is both a store of value and a utility token. The numbers for Cardano? 700 million in market cap at the end of 2017 and today, 29 billion. In 2021, it hit a high of about 95 billion, just shy of that magical $100 billion milestone. Next up is Polygon. With Ethereum becoming more and more popular, Ethereum's transaction costs and transaction congestion grew into major problems. A group of three engineers from India created Polygon as a side chain to Ethereum. The purpose being that transaction work can move off the Ethereum main chain and into Polygon. This gave a massive performance boost and reduction in fees for using Ethereum. And this expanded the benefits of dApps or decentralized applications. Finally, the Matic token is the native currency of Polygon. The numbers, 11 million, April 2019. Today, a $10 billion market cap, with a high of nearly 20 billion last year in 2021. Next, we have Cosmos. Built by Tendermint Corporation, it easily connects chains together through their inter-blockchain protocol. With Cosmos, moving between chains is cheap and easy. Anyone who has ever tried to move tokens from one chain to another knows how complex, costly, frustrating, dangerous, and time-consuming this can be. Cosmos also created an SDK to quickly build, test, and deploy dApps. Atom is their native token and is used to secure inter-blockchain value. The numbers? Early 2019, $1.2 billion, reaching a high of $12 billion last year in 2021, and today's market cap being closer to $8 billion. After hearing some of these other astounding valuations, one might think this blockchain is underperforming, but its purpose and market cap are compelling. Next, Solana. Solana was founded back in 2017. Solana's claim to fame is that their block creation speed takes only 400 milliseconds and they can process over 50,000 transactions per second. By comparison, Ethereum block creation speed is 10 to 14 seconds and Bitcoin is the worst at just over 10 minutes. That's why it takes so long for us to see our transactions getting processed and our balances updated. The SOL, the SOL, is the native token of Solana and it's used pretty much as a utility, but it's also a form of payment within the Solana network. The numbers for Solana are $8 million in April 2020, and today a market cap of $32 billion. Solana exceeded a market cap of $70 billion during the bull run of 2021. I want to digress for just a moment and note that all of these blockchains I've covered are considered Layer 1 and Layer 2 blockchains, some into Layer 3. Layer 1 being the infrastructure layer, also known as the main chain or main net. Layer 2 is known as the consensus layer, the layer that does the work of validation and finalization of blocks. And Layer 3 is being for interoperability and execution of dApps. The reason I digressed is because we're going to get into some Layer 2, Layer 3 examples now. And let me mention, 
If the previous blockchains and cryptos weren't surprising enough, hang on to your seat. ApeCoin. The ApeCoin DAO launched ApeCoin on March 18 of this year. Its purpose is to become a monopoly for NFTs and PFPs. Being a DAO, there is no single person one can point to as the owner. As Coindesk puts it, there's a black hole at the center of this ape galaxy. Who actually put this thing together? Okay, ApeCoin numbers. On March 18, their market cap was $635 million. On March 24th, six days later, their market cap, $2.2 billion. That's a $1.6 billion increase in six days. Absolutely incredible. Oh, in case you're wondering, ApeCoin is behind the Board Ape Yacht Club, where you can buy a PFP picture for proof a profile picture for social media. Madonna recently purchased this NFT for a staggering $572,000. And here's one that Mark Cuban bought for $400,000. Irrational exuberance, anybody? Or the future? There is another layer one chain I want to mention, Ripple Labs. It's not so much about their market cap as it is for what they're doing. Ripple Labs is a private company and their token XRP is used for cross-border payment, settlement, and asset exchange. It's a very SWIFT-like entity, but it's a lot faster and a lot cheaper. Ripple Labs was founded in 2012 and is geared pretty much toward the enterprise, institutional, and governmental market space. Ripple supports about 40 fiat currencies and is ideal for transacting international trade securely and privately. Since Ripple is a centralized company, it must conform to U.S. SEC regulations. To escape that, one of the founders took the Ripple code base and created a new decentralized Ripple chain called Stellar. Being decentralized, Stellar has a much lower bar of compliance to U.S. SEC regulations. Stellar supports all currencies and is handling over 10,000 customers per day around the globe. Stellar's users are primarily consumers. Their numbers. Ripple has a market cap of $39 billion with the token XRP, and Stellar has a market cap of $5 billion with the token XLM. Interestingly, there is competition in this space from others. For example, SWIFT, the centralized cross-border transaction settlement company. They have announced they will be supporting a blockchain of their own named GPI. And JPMC also has embraced crypto with their own in-house layer one chain, Onyx. Their coin is called JPM Coin, a nice play in the name JPMC. And as it turns out, Onyx is the foundation of SWIFT's GPI blockchain. I would like to mention three newer coins in this space. New York City Coin, Miami Coin, and Austin Coin. These are all coins that are built on the Stacks protocol that is used by a company called City Coins. The business model of all three of these are set up so that the cities can extract 30% of mining fees to fund projects in their respective cities. Citizens can buy into the coins and then stake their coins to earn an annual percentage yield or APY. Currently, as of this research, New York City coin is paying 265% APY, annual percentage yield, in STX coins. These rewards are received for sticky currency. Miami coin pays 145% APY. Austin coin will start to pay once it's fully in the marketplace. The numbers are New York City coin has a market cap of 3 million. Miami coin is 11 million and Austin coin is not yet in circulation. Well, that leads me to the end of this episode and a question needs to be asked. Why did I share all of this with you and just where is this going? If you notice the order of the technologies presented here, the pattern is simple. Bitcoin came first. It was a pure store of value currency. And that's all it is and all it ever will be. 
all the rest of those up to ApeCoin were just utility tokens, like gas for your car, where the gas is a token and the car is the blockchain. And now we are seeing coins being made for real world uses, like buying things and paying for real things. Our real world use cases for blockchain are going to be for tokenizing Cisco hardware, selling and delivering services, and managing entitlement. In other words, this conversation is to be continued in Cisco 3.0 Season 1, Episode 3. See you there. Oh, before I go, I'd like to hear what you thought of this presentation. Good, bad, indifferent, thumbs up, thumbs down, I'd like to know. But thanks for watching. Bye all.